All right, hello and welcome to MCR for day three. So we are in unit one, perspective matters and problem solving. And we're gonna be getting into a couple of divisibility rules uh, and a couple of factorizations, uh, things like that to go along with your math 154 course. So to get us started, there you go. We're gonna start with just how you would simplify a fraction. So the main idea with simplifying a fraction would be if you get it down to something like 20 over 100, for example, you would wanna ideally simplify this down to one out of five. If your fraction was 21 out of 35, then you would say 21 is three times seven and 35 is five times seven, and you would get rid of the sevens, giving you three fifths. So a good way to go about simplifying fractions is to first know your divisibility rules. So if it's even, then you know that it's divisible by two. So if you're not sure what else it's divisible by, you could start taking out the twos, for example. So if I didn't know that the 20 and the 100 went to one fifth, I could turn 20 into two times 10 and 100 into two times 50 and at least get rid of those. And then I could keep going with that pattern. So as long as you can take out these common numbers, you're reducing your fraction down. So we have a couple common divisibility rules for the numbers two through 10 that are quick ways to reduce down your fraction. So one of them is again, if it's divisible by two, then it's gonna be an even number. All you have to look at is the last digit. If it's a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight, it's divisible by two, great place to start. So some examples would be 22, 54, 158, and those numbers. So I'm gonna quickly highlight, that would be the two, four, eight, six, and zero on the ends that make those numbers divisible by two. If you wanna figure out if something's divisible by three, it's kind of a fun rule, you add up all of the digits in the number. And if it's a multiple of three, then it's, a div uh, then it's divisible by three. So if you take the number 27, two plus seven is nine, which is divisible by three. So 27 is divisible by nine. If you take a bigger number, 3,675, and you add all those up, that gives you 21, which is divisible by three. And you can do it again, two plus one, is also three divisible by three. So a quick way to just tell if something is divisible is to add it all up. And if it's a multiple of three, it's divisible by three as a number. So then if it's divisible by two and it's divisible by three, it's also divisible by six. And a good way to kind of look at that is, is the number even? If it is, it's automatically divisible by two. And then do the digits add up to the multiple of three, then it's divisible by six. So it's both. Take those two rules and combine them. If you're divisible by two and divisible by three, then you get to also be divisible by six without just throwing all these numbers in a calculator. So if we did this number, one, five, zero, it's even. One plus five is six, which is divisible by three. So this entire number is definitely divisible by six as well. And then the number five, you know it's divisible by five if you look at just the last digit and it's a zero or a five. So only the last digit, if it's a zero or a five, the entire number is divisible by five. Similar is gonna be your 10. If it ends in a zero, just a zero, the last digit, then it's divisible by 10. So 40, 850, 12,560, et cetera. So those you just look at the last digit. Um, if it's divisible by four, kind of a cool thing is it needs to be even, that's a good way to tell, but you only have to look at the last two digits. If the last two digits are divisible by four, the whole number is because now your multiples of 100 after that and 100 is divisible by four. So you only have to look at the last two digits. And for an eight, you only have to look at the last 
three digits. So if you are trying to figure out some of these, if you look at 064, 64, 64 is divided by eight. If you look at 984 and type it in real quick, it's divisible by eight. And then you look at 904. You don't have to look at the whole number. You just have to look at the last three. And then the other one is the nine. Nine says when you add up the digits, if there are multiple of nine, they're divisible by nine. Very similar to that three rule. So if I take my digits here, 11,349, that gives me 16, 17, 18, and we're good. Also, if you're divisible by nine, you're divisible by, by three, because three goes into nine. If you're divisible by eight, you're divisible by four and two, because two and four also go into eight. So a good practice to do would be to pause this and see if you can create a three digit and a four digit number that are gonna be divisible by each of the ones that I have here. So if you're trying to get a number divisible by two, all you have to do is have the last digit be zero, two, four, six, or eight. So you can pick any two numbers you want as long as the last number is even. You could pick any three numbers you want as long as the last number is even. So again, as long as your numbers end in a two, four, six, or eight, then you're good to go. For the three, the three digit number needs to add to a multiple of three. So maybe 201. And you can get creative with these. The four digit number needs to also add to a multiple of three. So I did one, one, one to be three, and then ended it with zero. Two plus one is three as well. You could get much more creative. You could do 801, you could do eight, two, two, you know, and as long as they add up to a multiple of three. So you don't necessarily have to have the answers I have up here. For divisible by five, it needs to end in a zero or a five. So again, the first two numbers, the first three numbers can be anything you want. It's just that last digit. Right, so then for six, for six, it needs to be even, it needs to be divisible by two. But then the digits also have to add up to a multiple of three. So, you know, again, get very creative here. I might do 156 because that adds up to 12. And for the four digit number, I might do 1452 because that's 7, 8, 12 as well. And they're even. Lots of possibilities for these. <coughs> and then the one that's slightly easier for 10 just has to end in a zero. So it really doesn't matter what you put for the rest of the numbers as long as they end in a zero. All right, as you scroll down to page two, this would be a good place to pause and just see if you can figure out using the divisibility rules, which ones are divisible by which. So once you've gone through and done it, go ahead and check 54, five plus four, is nine, so that makes it divisible by three and nine. It's even, and then it's divisible by two and three, so it's also divisible by six. And then you can check the others as well. Uh, 288, two plus eight plus eight is 18, and it's even, so that's two, three. 88 is divisible by four, six, eight, and nine. And again, just check all of your rules as you go. For the one, two, five, oh, I'm gonna look at the last two digits for a minute and the last one, it's even, it's a zero, so it's five and 10, but 50 is not divisible by four, so no to four, no to eight, and then one plus two plus five is eight, so it's not three, it's not six, it's not nine. For my seven, five, four, it was only even. So it's just divisible by two. For the 
for the 796, it was two and four. For the 5,760, that was one that was divisible by everything. For the 738, it was two, three, six, and nine uh, adds up to 18, making it three and nine, it's even. And then two and three also make it divisible by six. 95, nine plus five is 14. So no to even, no to the three, no to the four, because it's not even anyway. Five, and then it doesn't end in a zero. 360 was another one that was all of them. Go through the rules, it follows them all. 12, four, five, three is a great one to look at it and say, hmm, I wonder what this adds up to. Eight, 12, 15, so it's divisible by three, not two because it's not even. Not even means it's not two, four, six, eight, or 10 right off the bat. And then it doesn't end in a five or a zero. And then 15 is not divisible by nine. So it is only divisible by three. And then the very last one was three and nine. because it adds up to nine, but it's not even. So if you know it's not even, you can already cross out two, four, six, eight, and 10, because it's not, those have to have a divisibility of two in them. All right, so you can see how you did on that. So the idea when we're simplifying fractions is that we wanna look for what they have in common. So A, the top number is our numerator, the bottom number is our denominator, and it's gonna be a quotient of two numbers. You can't ever have zero on the bottom because we, uh, it's undefined how many times zero goes into nothing. So if the denominator is zero, then it's gonna be an undefined quantity. So the fundamental principle of fractions then says you can break numbers apart into their factors and cancel out anything that's on top and bottom. So if you have 10 times two, over five times two, you can cancel out what they have in common and you can start to reduce it down. And this has the same value as the original. This was 20 over 10, which is two. This is 10 over five, which is two. So we don't lose any of them. So you're trying to get that common factor and then you're trying to cancel it out. So to get it in what we call lowest terms, it's when they have no more common factors other than one, meaning you've canceled out everything. So if this is two times three times five times seven, and the bottom number is two times three times five, we've canceled out everything they have in common. A great way to do this is to get something into its prime numbers. So a prime number is a number that only has two factors, one and itself. For example, two is prime, because you can break it into two and one. So if you do what's called a prime factorization, you break a number into all of its primes. So if I were to do a number like 20, I could break it into four times five, but then I would break the four into two times two times five. That's the prime factorization. We wouldn't list one, and one is also not prime because it only has one factor, one, and prime numbers have to have two. So when you write out this prime factorization, you write it as a product of the prime numbers. So for example, 18 can be obtained by doing two times three times three. Um, and just a good piece to have is that all of the prime numbers from two to 97 are listed up here, just so you start to know a few. So once I get something down to two, three, five, seven, eleven. 11, or randomly a 53, a 67. I can't break them down anymore. So the benefit to a prime factorization is you have them all and then you're canceling out everything they have in common and you don't have to worry about missing one. So when you're simplifying them, you write the numerator and denominator as a product of primes and then cancel all the factors that they both have in common. 
So then how do you know when it's simplified when they have nothing else in common except for one? So an example would be 15 could be written as primes as three times five. 90, if we wanna look at 90, I use something called a factor tree and I'll just pick any two that make 90 and then keep going until I have all the primes. So it's two times three times three times five. So one five will cancel, one three will cancel, and I'll get left with one over six as my answer. So for the next one, 165 is a much, much larger number, but it ends up breaking up to three, five, and 11. And then 210 is two times three times five times seven. So those cancel and you get 11 over 14, which you may not have, have originally seen, but if you start breaking these down, that's prime, it becomes a little easier to figure out what they have in common if, it, if you didn't immediately see and start taking out numbers. And then finally 56 out of 135. If we look at 56, I can divide it into eight times seven. Eight is three twos. And then I can divide 135 into nine times 15 and then break that down. If I'm doing the prime factors, there's nothing in common. So that tells me that this was already simplified. And I, there's nothing else I can do at this point. So that's another just kind of good place. All right, then for our next item, um, to convert fraction notation to decimal notation, um, it's good to have your place values. So where we start with, is I'm gonna start with a place value chart and I'm gonna highlight the ones. So the ones would be your one, seven, that first digit in front of the decimal. If I go positive, your tens, so this would be 27, represented by 10, multiple of it. And then as you keep going, the next one is hundreds, thousands, et cetera. So if we wanna go the other way, tenths, so if you have 2.3, that three is over 10 if I convert it to a fraction. If I go to hundreds, which is two decimals, then that 12 is over 100. So one, two, three is thousands. So if you have that, it's over a thousand. So if you notice the number of zeros is the number I'm moving. Then you go to 10,000, then hundred thousands. So when you're asked, to read and write numbers or convert them later, we wanna look at those decimal forms. What we're also gonna look at for a moment is just how to say these though. So this number that I have here, 527, and then it goes all the way out to four decimals. So that's the 10,000. So this is 1,243 10 thousandths. So you go to the farthest, just like if you had this number, you wouldn't say 0, 1, 0, 10, 100, you would just say 100. Same as here, these are to the 10 thousandths, so it's that number over 10,000, and we call it a th. So the THS represents a decimal component, not having it represents a whole number component. So if I wanted to read, anytime this says practice, by the way, it's a good spot to pause me and try the problem first and then keep going and look at the answers. So if I wanna read and write the following numbers, this is one, two, five. Now I do have a 10 in a ones place. So this would be 125. The 231.4 would be 231 and four tenths. The 712.82 would be 712 and 82 hundredths. 
And the answers to these are posted as well. So you can look at the completed ones. And then this one is 200 and 246 and 135 thousandths. So one, two, three gets one, two, three zeros. And you say it with that last piece. Right, then go in here. If you wanna convert decimal to fraction, then you count the number of decimal places. So 5.971 has three decimal places. So then you add to the bottom that number of zeros, and then you can remove the decimal. It's essentially like multiplying by 10, by 10, by 10. One, two, three. So I can take my 5971 over one and multiply it by a thousand, which moves the decimal one, two, three, and gives me my fractional form. So it's okay that we're doing that because we're doing it to the top and bottom and the number becomes larger. So if I wanted to do it here, this is 2.18 over one. I'm moving it one, two, one, two. So I'm putting one, two zeros there, multiplying it by a hundred, moving it over two decimal places. If I wanna get rid of the decimal here, I moved it one, two, three, one, two, three. Also, if you look up at the chart, that's a thousandth. So it's gonna be out of a thousand. These are 10 thousands. So I know that I'm gonna have 10,000 on the bottom. So two, five, eight, four, six, one, two, three, four. So now if you wanna convert fraction notation to decimal notation, you basically do the opposite. You're gonna count the number of zeros in the denominator and then move the decimal to make it smaller because you're essentially dividing, that number becomes smaller. So if you have four, two, three divided by 100, that's one, two. So you move it one, two, and it gives you 4.23. So again, it's division. So you're getting smaller. So it becomes 28.5 because you're moving it over one. This moves it two, one, two. So it's 0.15. This moves it one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's 2.587, one, two, one, two, 36.92. Two. And again, it's always good to pause before the practice problems so that you can try them on your own. All right, then next, last kind of item for today is we're gonna put all this together and simplify fractions that might have products of two numbers or might have variables. So we can start to use this when we get into some of your Math 154 items, especially where you get into units. So when you wanna simplify fractions that you're multiplying, first you wanna try to, um, write the numerator and denominator as a product of primes. Cancel out any factors so that you've got reduced numbers to first. Then you multiply straight across. So the reason for that is you don't want to multiply these big numbers and try to reduce them down. You want to reduce them down early. So the two thirds, let's make the nine, a three and a three, and the 20, a two and a 10. So we can already cancel these. And without having to do too much more math, we get three tenths out of it. So anything on top can be divided by anything on bottom. When you're multiplying, it doesn't matter the order. It's all fair game. So again, great time to go ahead and pause me and try the rest of them. Uh, but I am going to keep going. So works the same if you have fractions that have um, variables. They're just like numbers. You cross out anything that's the same. Nice and factored for you. If you have variables and numbers, split them apart. So I'm gonna do five, eight is two, 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 and three. For the numbers down here, I'm gonna go two, nine is three times three, two. And then over here, I'm gonna put the, number, the letters X, Y, W, X, Y, Z. 
And again, it's multiplication, so it doesn't matter the order. Now I can go through and start getting rid of things. X and Y cancel, X with X, Y with Y. The two cancels, another two cancels. They only can cancel with one, so you have to have multiple. And what I have left, I'm gonna highlight it in blue, is my five, two, three, W, Z. And then you multiply it back together. So five times two is 10 W over three Z. This same idea works for unit cancellations. If you're multiplying units, if it's on top, it can cancel with bottom. So this is a unit conversion, feet to inches, five feet converts to 60, five times 12 inches. And we've done a unit conversion just as a little bit of a foreshadowing into your dimensional analysis unit. So what you're gonna wanna turn in for homework is the day three homework page. So it is right down here. It has six questions. Make sure you do them all. Make sure you show work, converting decimal to fraction, fraction to decimal, and multiplying and simplifying fractions. So that is it for day three.